In this video, we will be demonstrating Ohm's law, which describes the relationship between voltage and current in a resistor. This video is part of a playlist doing electronics labs in a free online circuit simulator called Tinkercad Circuits. So if you missed the first two videos about how to use a breadboard and how to use a multimeter, make sure you check those out linked in the video description. This is also a companion video series to my Intro to Circuits playlist, which goes through the theory and math behind many circuits, but represents using them schematics or circuit diagrams instead of the literal breadboard view that we're going to do here in Tinkercad. So make sure you go check out the video on Ohm's Law first to get the underlying math if you need that introduction. So to start out doing this in Tinkercad, we are going to have a battery connected to the breadboard wired up to the power buses. So I have access to power everywhere on the breadboard. Again, if you don't know how to do that, go back and check out the first video about using a breadboard. And we are going to add a resistor to the circuit, but I'm not gonna put it in the breadboard yet. Quick review of Ohm's Law. Again, go watch the Ohm's Law video if you haven't already, but it provides the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance for a resistor. So V equals IR, or voltage equals current times resistance. That means for a given battery and resistor, I should be able to predict before I connect them what the current through the resistor is going to be. Now, in Tinkercad, I have idealized components where this battery is going to produce exactly nine volts. And this resistor right now has a resistance of exactly one kilo ohm, although I can change that value. So to demonstrate that, I am going to use a multimeter, which again, we covered in a previous video. If I hook the multimeter up to my resistor and I hook another multimeter up to my battery, For color coding, I'm gonna change the negative wires to black there. Okay, and then hit start simulation. The multimeter defaults to volts, so I'm gonna change this one to R for resistance. We see I'm getting exactly nine volts from the battery and exactly one kilo ohm on the resistor. Now, in the real world, if you do these physical measurements, you're probably not gonna get those exact values. A fresh nine volt battery is actually a little over nine volts, and then as it drains, it's going to dip below nine. And resistors have a tolerance range on them. The most common value is probably plus or minus 5%. So you might get 900 something ohms or a little over a thousand ohms. So I could, taking Ohm's law again, the other video covers the math, but divide nine volts by this resistance to get my expected current. But it's different to do those ideal values, nine volts divided by exactly one kilo ohm, versus if you wanna predict the actual measured current in the real world, you would need to measure the actual battery voltage and the actual resistance and then divide those two values. For this demonstration, we are just going to use the ideal values in Tinkercad. So I'm actually going to change this to a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So stop the simulation. Tinkercad won't let you edit the values while the simulation is running. Click on the resistor, type in a zero to change that to 10. If I start the simulation again, you'll see this now reads 10 kilo ohms. So again, I can now divide the voltage by the resistance to calculate the expected current. You need to be careful with units when doing that. Note that this is nine volts divided by 10 kilo ohms. So if you're not familiar with your metric prefixes, that's a topic for another video. I don't currently have my own on it, but you can find plenty of YouTube videos about that. So I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and pause the video here so you can do that calculation yourself and no cheating, pause the video and try it yourself if you haven't already. Okay, if I divide nine volts by 10 kilo ohms, which is 10,000 ohms, then I'm going to get 0 0.0009 amps, keeping my units con consistent. So base ohms law of equals IR, that's volts equals amps times ohms. If you have kilo or milla in there, you need to account for the units accordingly. So. 0 0.0009 amps. I could also write that as 0 0.9 milliamps or 900 microamps, however you find most convenient to represent it. So that is my expectation based on the values I'm measuring here. Next, we are going to connect the battery to the resistor and then put a multimeter in series to measure the current. So to do that, I'm going to delete my two multimeters for now, and this is another good point to pause the video if you want practice. Connect the resistor in series with the battery so current will flow through the resistor. Again, we have that first video showing how to use a breadboard. There was more than one way 
correct way to do this, kind of a matter of personal preference. For a very simple circuit like this, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but as you start building more complex circuits, it is important to be neat and keep things organized on your breadboard, especially to aid in debugging. So again, pause the video if you would like to try that yourself. If you just wanna see how I do it, I am gonna to choose to rotate the resistor and put it across this gap in the middle of the breadboard, and then I'm gonna connect one end of the resistor to my positive or power bus and the other end to the ground or negative bus. And if I hit start simulation, I don't have an LED in this circuit like I did in one of the earlier videos. So there's really no visual indication that anything is happening or that current is flowing through this resistor. That is where our multimeter is going to come in. So I would like to connect a multimeter in series to measure the current through this resistor. And as I mentioned in a previous video, Again, pause here and guess if you can, whether I did that correctly or not. If I run this simulation, am I gonna measure current through that resistor or did I do something wrong? Which again, you should know if you watch the video about multimeters, this is a very common mistake I see students make when they need to measure current through something initially. They look at this and go, hey, I put the multimeter in series. Why am I getting zero amps? And if you have an LED in this circuit, then you can tell that the current isn't zero because the LED is on. So there must be some current. And the mistake you're making here is that remember, all of the rows in a breadboard hole as highlighted by the green circles in Tinkercad here are connected to each other. So if I plug both multimeter leads into the same row, I am just short circuiting them together and current isn't gonna flow through the multimeter. In order to force current to flow through the meter, I need to break the circuit by moving something, for example, this jumper wire to another row, and then connect the two multimeter probes to close the circuit so current flows through the meters. So if I do that like this, for example, again, turning this one red to stay consistent for color coding purposes. The other thing you will sometimes see here is you will get a negative reading if you connect them backwards. So here I have the negative probe going to the positive side of the circuit and I'm getting negative 900 microamps instead of positive. So if I just switch those, have the negative lead go down to this row and the positive lead go up to that row, start the simulation. We can see that Tinkercad just has an auto ranging multimeter. So there's no dial settings for manual ranging. It just automatically displays the correct units here, 900 microamps, which again is mathematically equivalent to 0 0.0009 amps or 0.9 milliamps. It kind of goes, gets rid of the decimal places and goes to 900 microamps here. But that is the exact value I expected from my calculation. If I want to, I can also stick another multimeter in here to confirm the voltage across the resistor, where again, if I do that backwards, I'm gonna get a negative reading. So I'm gonna connect like this, measuring voltage. I do go in parallel, not in series, cover some common mistakes with that in the previous video. And now if I start the simulation, you'll see that I am getting nine volts across the resistor and 900 microamps of current through it. If you attempt to add a third multimeter to measure the resistance, if you wanna display all three ohms value, ohm, sorry, ohms law values on screen at the same time, then you will encounter something interesting though. So say if I go to connect a third multimeter in parallel, so across the resistor like that, and when I run the simulation, I'm gonna set this to resistance. Things get a little weird. I actually get an error on the one that is attempting to measure resistance. And this has to do with how Tinkercad is simulating the multimeter behavior in the real world. You actually don't wanna try and measure the resistance of something while it is in a powered circuit. In order to do that, you need to do what we did earlier and pull the resistor out of the circuit and measure its across its leads directly with the multimeter without anything else connected. So again, if I pull that up on the side here, change this back to 10 kilo ohms, you see that Tinkercad will be perfectly happy measuring this resistor that is not connected to anything. It is not happy trying to measure the one in the powered circuit. That's giving an error on this multimeter and it's messing up the voltage and current readings I was getting otherwise. So if you do wanna have all three values on screen at the same time, you kinda of need to have this second resistor 
over here and make sure you give it the same values as the one in your circuit. You can then delete this extra one that I was attempting to use to measure resistance in the circuit. Here I go, now I can show all three values on screen at once, voltage, current, and resistance. So if you would like some more practice with Ohm's Law, you could try, for example, choosing a different resistor value, predicting the current, and then measuring the actual current. Or you could say, if I have a fixed resistor value, what voltage would I need to get a certain current? Remember, you have an equation with three variables, and for any two of them, you can solve for the third. So it is a little trickier to change the voltage in Tinkercad, whereas you can just click on a resistor and set the resistance value to whatever you want. You can't really change the voltage of this 9-volt battery, but you can add... 1.5 volt batteries and select how many there are two three or four so those batteries are connected in series their voltages are going to add so you can go up to six volts there you can also add a simulated benchtop power supply so if you go to all instead of basic for the components list up here and scroll down you can also search for this by name if you remember what it's called here we go we just have power supply so this is actually going to give me a variable voltage that I can set to whatever I want. So if you wanted to choose, for example, 5 volts, which is a common voltage for working with microcontrollers, things like the Arduino or USB power, but you can't get from the batteries in Tinkercad, I can run the simulation. And now I can actually turn this knob or click on the power supply and just type in the voltage here. So say I want to set that to 10 volts and it will automatically change. Now, many benchtop power supplies also have a current control setting where it will do its best to provide a prescribed amount of current and adjust the applied voltage. So that is another option where you could set the current and the resistance and predict what the resulting voltage is going to be. I am having a little trouble getting that to work in Tinkercad with this power supply. Trying to click on the current control option there isn't doing anything, and playing with the knob, sometimes the little green light to indicate current control will turn on briefly, but then it goes back over to voltage control automatically. So, and maybe different if you're working with a real-world power supply that has um, more defined options for working with those two things. If you have a suggestion for how to get that working in Tinkercad, please leave a comment below this video. I apologize if I got that wrong. But again, point being, Ohm's Law has three variables, and if you know two of them, you can calculate the third one. So you can practice choosing two of them in Tinkercad, predicting what the third one should be, and then measuring it. The final thing I want to explore here, which is going to lead into the next video, is for you to see what happens as you make this resistor value smaller. So I've got 10 kilo ohms there, and I am getting the exact values I predicted mathematically, but something interesting happens if I drop these down to 1 kilo ohm. So I'm going to run the simulation again, and you see that I'm no longer getting exactly 9 volts across the resistor. I'm now getting 8.99 volts and 8.99 milliamps, even though my resistor is still exactly one kilo ohm, and nominally I would expect the battery to be exactly nine volts. And if I keep decreasing this value, so let's say I go down to, I'm gonna stop the simulation for a second, go down by another factor of 10, I'm going to change this to 100 ohms, and again, I'll change this one over here too, just so you can see the multimeter reading, then, that voltage starts to drop even more. I'm down at 8.87 volts. And if I keep going smaller, get another factor of 10, down to 10 ohms, it just keeps dropping quite a bit. So I'm no longer getting what I would have predicted if I just divided nine volts by 10 ohms. I would be expecting 900 milliamps. So that's a pretty significant difference. And if I go extreme, say I'm gonna go all the way down to one ohm, well, that is a huge drop. I am now getting only 3.6 volts across the resistor, and there's nothing else in this circuit, so I would expect the voltage across the resistor to just be equal to the battery voltage. And this is occurring because Tinkercad is actually simulating some real-world battery behavior. This is not an ideal battery that can just produce an infinite amount of current and hold 9 volts forever. As you draw more and more current from the battery, 
it is going to cause the battery's voltage to drop due to the battery's internal resistance. So there is some internal resistance to current flow in this battery. There is some voltage drop over this resistance. So the actual output voltage at the battery terminals is not always perfectly nine volts. It depends on how much current you are drawing. And earlier in the video, we started with a very large resistor value, 10 kilo ohms, so that current was pretty small and the voltage drop was negligible, at least to the precision we could measure here with two decimal places on the meter. So what we effectively have here, which is going to be the topic of our next video, is a voltage divider where we have two resistors in series and the output voltage from that circuit across the second resistor is lower than the input voltage and the value of that voltage is going to depend on the value of the two resistors. Here one of those resistors is the internal resistance of the battery and then we have one external resistor. In the next video we're going to look at designing a voltage divider with two resistors to convert one voltage to another. But again that is the topic for the next video so stay tuned for that.